Now I often have people asking me about what's the best gaming motherboard or what's the best platform for gaming or whatever the case may be. And what I usually say to them is the best gaming motherboard is the motherboard that has all the features you want and fits all the hardware you want to put on it. But just to demonstrate, I thought I'd take a couple of gaming motherboards and pit them against each other. This is going to be a bit of an examination of the 990FX chipset versus the 890FX chipset. So right here what I have in my hand is a Crosshair 4 formula. You're going to want to come a little closer so I can show you this board as well. Um, and the Crosshair 4 formula is an 890FX board. It's got support for USB 3 via the back panel. It's got an AM3 socket, dual channel DDR3, up to four PCIe 16X slots, although you're running at uh, 16X and 16X or at 16X 884, something along those lines, yeah. I think that's the, uh, the deal. We've also got SATA 2. Okay, so the, 890, uh, the 990FX version, the Crosshair 5 formula, has a bit of a sharper aesthetic. All these SATA ports are changed over to SATA 3 6 gigabit per second now. We also have an additional USB 3 front header to go with the one, two, three, four USB 3 back headers. Okay, it is an AM3 Plus socket which means that we'll have support for AMD's bulldozer 8-core CPUs when they are released. So basically, what does that mean in terms of its performance with a current generation processor? So I thought I'd take some of the benchmarks I did before. This is with a, this is with a 6990 dual graphics uh, video card, or dual chip video card. We've got 8 gigs of RAM, uh, my usual test bench. And so I thought I'd take my 1100T benchmarks with the 890FX platform and run them against the 990FX to see how it goes. So I'm almost done and I'll show you guys the results when I'm done and I think that if you have been following how much of an impact chipsets have on computer performance these days you probably won't find these results very surprising. Alright so here's my results with the 890FX versus the 990FX chipset. So I'm gonna leave off Crisis 2 for now. We're gonna return to that but let's look at The Witcher. So, uh, yeah, performs about 8% better. Dirt 3, the 990FX is a little slower. Fear 3, they're identical. Um, Battlefield Bad Company 2, the 990FX is a little faster. And Civ 5, it's a little faster. So it seems to me the board is slightly faster for gaming, although I can't really say with certainty that these are significantly um, different enough to, to be representative of the performance delta because I didn't do a ton of runs. I've had a lot of benchmarking to do this weekend. So this is pretty much within the margin of error for most of them. Although Witcher 2, I have very good consistency on that benchmark. I would say that one's definitely out ahead. And Civ 5 is just a late game view, so that one is definitely ahead. And there were they were distinctly different frame rates. It's 30 constant, 31 constant. So there's uh, not much uh, room for error there. Um, Dirt 3 is a CAN benchmark, so once again, although it's a CAN benchmark with AI, so it, it runs a race and sometimes the, the AI player places differently, so depending on how many cars are in front of it at a time, it could be slightly more or less demanding. Now Crisis 2, this is a funny one because I'm going to have to go, go back at this because Crisis 2, I ran it with the, uh, when I was originally doing uh, this one with the APU versus the 1100T. I ran it with dual 6970s and uh, I was getting zero scaling on this platform so I was like okay forget it. So that's when I switched to the 6990 for my standardized benchmarking platform. Now I got reasonable scaling with the 6990s so I was like oh okay well I mean it didn't scale great it went from like 40 to 49 FPS and then it you know this was appropriate given this but then all of a sudden I, I, I mean I reran this again and I got the same results so for some reason this platform performed way better in Crisis 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw the Crosshair 4 back on the test bench and I'm going to run Crisis 2 again and see what happened because I'm not even reinstalling, I'm not even changing any drivers, I'm changing absolutely nothing about my Windows platform in order to switch between 990 and 890FX because they're actually very, very, very similar chipsets. There's almost no difference between them. So let's see what happens here, guys. Well, every once in a while you run into these bizarre things. I, I just did my run through again, and if nothing else, there it is, 49.1. This uh, reassures me that my Crisis 2 run through is fairly um, consistent. So 49.1 is my new result. So yeah, you, you see this kind of thing from time to time where a particular setup is a little bit faster in you know something than another one, even though they should be very similar. 
So the 990FX Crosshair 5 formula seems to perform better in Crisis 2 with the 6990 than the Crosshair 4 formula. I suspect it's just a quirk of my particular setup. Like, I remember I had uh, one of my old computers. It was uh, like a 939, socket 939 computer. For some reason, never required a password for Warcraft 3. I never had to uh, enter a CD key. Or, or rather, not, I never had to, I never had to enter the CD. So uh, it would run with a, with a no CD even back before that game would do it. And, uh, you know, I, the computer I had before that wouldn't do it, and the computer I upgraded to afterwards wouldn't do it. And it was just sort of a, a quirk of that particular platform. So there you go. So those are my results for the 890FX versus the 990FX. I would pretty much call this probably some kind of a weird glitch. But the funny thing is, this is like significantly more playable on this platform than, like this is a crappy 50 FPS and this is a good 60. You can really feel it um, in those drops. So thank you for checking out my video on the Crosshair 5 formula versus the Crosshair 4 formula, 990FX. 890FX, don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos. And oh yeah, here's that uh, black socket indicating the AM3 Plus compatibility. Very cool stuff. Okay, this is driving me crazy. I'm going to do it one more time. So I put the, Christ, uh, the Crosshair 5 back on the bench. I'm firing up Crisis 2 again. Oh, well, I guess I'll have to restart before I do that. And then... Uh, yeah, I'm changing absolutely zero game settings. I checked GPU-Z, it's running at 16x in this slot, all of that stuff. So let's see what happens. Let's see if I can reproduce these results again. Well, I figured it out. Here's my result with the 990FX. So uh, 50.8. So I can throw this guy out because here's what happened. The 990FX board, is set to the wrong date in the BIOS, which caused my FRAPS uh, results to be out of order because I sort it by date modified in order to make it simple for me to see which is the last benchmark I ran. So the true result, um, and it must have been my imagination that it was running smoother on here, the true result is around 50 FPS and performance is equivalent. Thank you for your patience while I sorted out this little technical matter, and uh, I guess thanks for coming along on the ride. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.